When I was in Daegu, they didn't let me into a club because I was a foreigner. Yep, um, that's the thing that happens in Korea. There are some places that are locals only. There are also some places you have to show when you when you live in Korea as a uh, oh it's it's potion seller dude. When you live in Korea as a, a foreign resident, you get something called an called an alien registration card, which is like way more um, metal. That, or it's way less metal than it sounds like, but there are places you have to show your alien registration card to go inside. I think it's, they, they might legitimately have like a quota and be like, we can only have like six foreigners in the, <laughs> in the club at any given time. And then there's also um, some places that allow foreigners but don't allow um, military personnel in. It would happen like now and then in, in Daegu because there was like, I don't know if the camps are still open, but there was like a few American military camps there. You would just be like enjoying yourself at a bar and then like military police would come in and half of the bar would get really quiet and then like two 40 year old men would leave with like a 21 year old man. Not in, un, like under arrest, but like under duress, I suppose. Where did they go? I mean, I'm pretty sure they just went, I'm pretty sure they just weren't supposed to be like out or they weren't supposed to be that drunk. So military police come in and are like, hey, dummy, go back to base. I will say, and this is not meant to be a knock on the American military, okay? Or the fine individuals involved in it. But this is just, for an anecdote, a colleague of mine when I taught in South Korea went on a couple dates with uh, a member of the American military who also happened to be stationed in Daegu. And I swear to God, he said to her, and then she said to us, isn't it amazing how smart Korean dogs are? Because they have to learn Korean to understand their owners. He thought that all dogs just learn English sort of like by default. And then that dogs in Korea would have to learn Korean in order to understand the commands from their owners. This is every profession I'm sure has people. I mean, I'm sure there's streamers who believe way stupider stuff than that, to be honest. But but that is a, uh, it, it's always stuck with me, that's for sure. Like that lady who wanted them to move the deer crossing sign. Wait a minute, I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that, but um, are you telling me that she wanted them to move the deer crossing sign because she wanted to change where the deer were crossing? <laughs> it's not safe to let the deer cross here. Bro, come on. I did, I mean, listen, it's not a serious thing. I've told this story many times before. But we did have a couple of incidents in South Korea. Once I was riding the subway with, with a friend of mine. I'm gonna take the fifth attack guaranteed crit. Um, and there was a, we were sitting down on the subway and then uh, the, there was a, a well-dressed Korean man that was getting off the subway. He was a younger guy, probably like in his mid twenties. And he looked at us, he gave us kind of like a cracked smile. He was like, you know, like, we're like, oh, what, what is, why is this guy? But y you get used to having like some attention as a as a foreigner in Korea, like kids will come up to you and just say like, hi, how are you? And like parents will come up to you and be like, and this is not a joke at all. This happened also when we were there for vacation in like 2018. But like parents will come up to you or even teachers will come up to you and be like, hey, you look like you speak English. Can you do some like English conversation with our students? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. Why not? But um, so you're, you're not necessarily looking at it as if like, um, oh, something's about to go down. But then he got off the, the subway and he, he like looked at us through the doors and he said, why are you hiding white bitches? And we, I just kind of looked at my friend and I was like, you know, is this really happening right now? And then he gave us both the middle finger and said, why are you hiding white bitches? And then the doors closed and he just like ran away. And then, I, all I remember is like, first off, it was like a very humorous... As far as racism goes, I guess it was a, a humorous, racist incident. 
But then also it was so awkward because we had like four more subway stops to go before we got back to our neighborhood and nobody on the subway said anything to us at all. Nobody said like, I, I don't expect them to like apologize for the actions of like another person that they're not involved with. But I just thought like, Maybe someone would look at us and give us like a little smile or something like that. It'd be like, you know, we understand, but in, no, they would like, we were on our own, man. And then, um, one time when I was walking home, I did get yelled at and told to go home, but they assumed I was American. I'm not saying that makes it okay to yell at someone to go back to their country, but I was like less offended because they were like, they said like basically go back to America. It doesn't make it better, but I was like, not only is it like a little offensive, but also you're just wrong. So it's like, I guess it was harder to be offended. But then like another time, my, the same friend of mine were eating at a restaurant. When we left the restaurant, an old man came up to us and saluted. And we were trying to figure out, like, what's going on. And then um, he pulled out a card from his wallet that was, like, his Korean military ID from the 1950s. And I was like, this is, like, racial, but in the other way. It's like, I don't deserve any credit for that shit, man. I didn't do anything. I was not involved. <laughs> Nor was, I think, like, anybody I'm related to, like, closely at all. But we were just like, yes, okay. Kamsamnida, have a nice day. No, I wasn't there when we landed on Juno Beach in the Second World War. I was actually, I had aged out of the infantry at that point. I was in the officer corps. I was doing like, so I was the guy, you know, you see in the World War II footage, like there's guys that are like cranking a radio and then going like, ah. I'm the guy like smoking cigarettes back on the, you know, forward operating base. That's like, ah, oh, I don't know, just keep pushing. That's, that's me. They let bald people into the military? Bro, that's like, as soon as you get there, they're like... You know, that's how you know the military was started by, like, a bald guy. As soon as you get there, you gotta match his haircut. 